welcome to another exciting tutorial guys today i have the signal r for you so i'm going to explain uh, what is signal r and how we can use the signal r technology so basically i'm going to use a demonstration like a demo sample application so you can see how you can use signal r and you can how you can do the communication uh, back and forth and so <clears throat> for this demonstration i'm going to use asp.net core 2.2 but SignalR technology has been there for some time with the SP.NET framework and also uh, Microsoft has announced they will use uh, SignalR for Blazor as well, which is SP.NET Core 2 3.0 for the server-side processing section. So once you go through all of these videos that I'm planning to do in the future, you would have a better understanding of SignalR, which means I'm going to build a series of videos on top of this video so on top of this application that i'm gonna start now and then we will add more features to it like uh, distributed caching and uh, how you can uh, communicate to separate clients or groups of clients all of those features i'm gonna build on top of this application so stay tuned and subscribe to this channel so you can get all the new updates and you can keep up uh, doing <coughs> keep up uh, joining to my new videos and you can get more understanding about signal R. so without further ado let's see what is signal R. signal R is a very uh, cool feature that enables uh, server side uh, server to push content to clients without the server waits to cli to clients to get connected to the server and ask for the updates or rather than clients go to the server and ask for the updates <clears throat> so if you can uh, as you can see here signal R supports three trans transport capabilities uh, web socket server send events and long polling so the cool thing about signal R is depending on the server capability when the client send the signal to the server to for the first connection initialization the handshake the server sends the available transport media like websocket server side event long polling and then the client can choose which one he wants to go with and also i'm going to describe the hub and i'm going to create a hub and i'm going to show you how you can uh, make the communication between clients and servers using the signal hub so if you are interested on this topic you can go through here there are some resources as well so without further ado, uh, let's jump into the tutor, uh, uh, the demo. So for this one, I'm going to use um, Visual Studio 2019, and I'm going to stick to ASP.NET Core Web Application template here, and click Next. And I'm going to I'll give a nice simple name here, um, sample web app. <coughs> And I'm going to see to web application the default MVC template. You can also use uh, the new core racer pages te template as well. But for this one, I'm going to see so we can build on top of this con uh, template. <coughs> and uh, here we're going to use 2.2 and framework is .NET Core. So let's create the project. And SignalR is very much famous on our real-time web applications like chat rooms, mail clients, uh, GPS systems, um, like, uh, for example, um, um, like enterprise uh, uh, applications like e eBay. So uh, clients can actually see the push notifications without doing anything from the client side. The server can send all the updates content to the clients all the connected clients so clients will automatically see those changes so that is the very uh, that, that is the coolest feature and the very powerful uh, technology behind this uh, signal R. <clears throat> so the first step is to get the signal R client side uh, javascript which is responsible for making the communication between the uh, signal R server basically the hub and make sure the communication is uh, happening behind the scene so for to do that you need to go to the your project <coughs> right click and add client side library and i'm going to use the up unpkg provider and copy paste the 
library here. So we are using sp.net module signal R and version one. So you can choose specific files or you can install all the files. But for this demonstration, we really need only this file, the minified version. And you can select the install location here. I'll choose this and install. So once that happens, you can see Signal our client side JavaScript has been installed here. <coughs> the next step is to create the hub, as I explained earlier. So I'll create a new folder and I'll put hubs. And let's create our first hub here. Create a class, notification hub. <coughs> the main point here is you need to derive it from the hub, which is actually the signal R and comes from the signal R namespace. So if you can see here using signal R. So that's the first step we need to do. The next step is you need to tell the startup class that you are using signal R. So you need to use signal R and then you need to map the routes. So then the um, signal uh, the, all the uh, requests that are coming to our server knows we are to map the uh, request to go to which hub. So then it knows this is our hub. You see the map hub and then it's going to this route. So that's a route configuration here and that's it from the startup. And in the notification, I will create a simple function here and I'll explain what it does. So the first one is I want to do this. <clears throat> so this is a task and we actually notify all the connected clients. And what is happening here is signal R um, automatically does a broadcast signal here to all the clients. It's a asynchronous call. And this is the client side function. So I named the function as client side function. And in the second parameter, from the second parameter, you can send any uh, <clears throat> any number of arguments you want. So you can have a simple argument or this can be a complex object in JSON. So for here, I just say this text message to all clients so then we know this broad broadcasting has happened successfully. So that's all here. It's very simple, guys. And let's go to the client side. So I'll go to the views, home, index. For here, I'll use the existing uh, Bootstrap launch model. See this demo. So if you can see here, just just launch this, launch this model here. So I'll copy paste this. <coughs> I have already copy paste the model here. So I'll use that. And uh, so that's it. So this is our button. Launch all clients. And once uh, once the server sends the signal to the client, client will uh, show this model to us. So then we know that it has been triggered. And I put this uh, paragraph here, product description, which we can inject dynamical context uh, here. So text here, basically. So that's it here. The next thing is you need to use the signal our client side JavaScript function, JavaScript here. And also, we need to have a client-side JavaScript to uh, handle the uh, communication to the client side, uh, to the server side. So here, I'll add a new uh, JavaScript file, and I'll explain what all of this is. So here, this is the main thing. So in this line, we are actually making the connection. We are using the signal our client side uh, module, and we are connecting to our hub here. So when this happened, this this is the this is why we actually uh, did the routing here. So when this happened, it actually comes here and it knows where to map the hub communication. So that is the signal here. And then I use this. I'll explain this later. We don't need any of these things for now. So, and that's it for now. So here what's happening is uh, this function start the connection to the clients, uh, to the server side. And uh, 
once the connection is happen uh, if you go here uh, to our hub we are actually sending this data to this function client side function so if you go here you can see this is a function and we are sending the message and we are showing say the text to our description and we are showing the model here what is happening is when you click the button this client button which is this button here when you click that we are we can invoke server side function so actually we are invoking notify clients which is on the hub so we are actually invoking this function from the client side that is why this is very actually interesting feature in signaler you can directly invoke server side functions from the client side and then i've just put this one so if something goes wrong we can see as a in the console so a kind of a debugging point and that's it <clears throat> so that's about here then the last step is to use our javascript file here as well so we need the both of them in order to uh, make the connection and then communicate to the server so that's it from here on the last section is since we are using jquery i think um, i need to move this section before using the jquery so then once this get loaded we already have the jquery loaded here then it won't i guess it won't fail it so that's it here <clears throat> um i think we are good to go so let's run and see what is happening Okay, this is because of the CTPS, so I'll enable that. Okay, so here we are. So what would happen if I press this button? Message to all clients, okay. But I know you guys are not happy because this is just one client. So let's get another client. This is our, this is uh, Chrome and this is Firefox. So we have two clients connected. How we know? I'll enable the debugger both and then i press f5 so you can see that is actually communicated to the hub and is connected on this id and this one is connected to the hub and is connected on this side so we have two separate clients connected so what should happen when i press this button we should get the notification to both clients so there we go so you get the push notification to both the clients from the server so that is how Signaler works, and that is how the broadcasting works on Signaler. And if I show a cool feature on here, if I press F5, you see the WebSocket, and you can see the WebSocket actually, because this feature is only available in Chrome, you can see the communication between server and client. Uh, Signaler actually keep uh, pinging the server and client, if you can see here. When I press the button, you can see it actually sends the data back and forth. It's a very cool feature in Chrome, but unfortunately, you don't have it on Firefox. So, <clears throat> I guess that is it for now on Signal R tutorial. So, in the next video, I would like to continue on the same solution and the same project as I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to build on top of this hub here. I'm going to add another function here to which can actually do. Uh, individually like so each client can can communicate and also i'm planning to do something on the controller level so you can push from the controller as well and also i'm going to introduce uh, distributed caching so you can centrally manage all the connected clients which is actually using a sql server backend so all the videos are actually uh, i have planned all the videos and they're actually in line and I'm going to publish one by one. So please subscribe to my channel and you guys get more knowledge on how to use Signal in proper way. And uh, please put some comments and a recommendation. And if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to get back to you guys. Um, again, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. Thank you.